Hello everyone and welcome to episode number four of Knack TV. I'm your host, Neil Malik, a software and professional development trainer with 10 years of experience who's hoping that today you're a little bit better at what you do. And over the long haul, I want you to be ridiculously good at what you do. This is the first of what I'm calling Alternative Fridays. So the point of this day's video is to show you that there is a free piece of software out there that allows you to do work that you didn't think you could do before. We're in week number one, the war on bullet points, and in the previous episode I showed you guys that if you created a diagram in your PowerPoint presentation, not only would it take more text off the screen, but as you were talking it would give more visual context, more weight, more interest, and more importance to what you were saying if you had a diagram behind you. So SmartArt inside of PowerPoint gives you diagramming features. But I also told you that if you're stuck with PowerPoint 2003, oh, I'm very sorry. PowerPoint 2003 is a terrible, horrible abomination when it comes to creating diagrams. Please, do not create diagrams in PowerPoint 2003. Instead, there's a ton of other software out there. If you are in a position where you get you know, money to buy software, feel free to buy Microsoft's Visio product. It's a very good uh, diagramming product. But this is episode number four, Alternative Fridays, and I'm showing you a website called diagram.ly. All right, so where do we start? When we look at a diagram, what we're hoping for is the ability to control what that diagram looks like and then ultimately to be able to paste that thing into a presentation or into a word file or onto a website or you know wherever you need your diagram to go and so we're going to pop open the web browser here go to www.diagram.ly diagramly is a free product online it's what we call a web application and as you can see all I have to do is close the welcome screen when it first pops up and I can start to create my diagram we go ahead and we start off on the left hand side of the screen every diagram is composed of a variety of different shapes and as you can see diagramly has a library of shapes different types of icons even the uh, different pictures of people down here at the bottom that allow you to create org charts and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple flow chart and uh, with a flow chart you could just uh, sort of create a set of rectangles uh, in order to represent different stages and then at the top of the screen you can see that you have things like what fill color that rectangle is going to have if you want to have a gradient on that rectangle to make it a little more visually interesting. So I'm just going to choose a fill color and I'm also going to go ahead and choose a color to accent that with, eh, maybe that bright blue. It's kind of ugly, but that's fine. And uh, you can also choose the direction of your color. And then you can just sort of uh, take off the outside line color if you want. And then uh, after a stage in your flowchart, maybe you drop in a decision point. Notice that you've got a nice little vertical guide right here that shows us that we're lined up. And again, I could just choose my color and then choose a color to accent that with. Now you've got two shapes in here. Let's go a little bit further. Let's say we want to copy this shape. Notice that when I hover over this I get a little arrow. If I shift click on that arrow it gives me the ability to duplicate that. Oops. Here we go. So now I can click on this shape and drag it over to the left. Notice again it shows me where I'm lined up appropriately. And once again I can shift click on that little arrow and duplicate that thing again. Line it up appropriately. Now in addition to this, I'll definitely want to add some text. So if you just double click on a shape, you can add some text. Not only that, but we can also uh, come in here and add text to the, di uh, to the diamond down below. Again, double click. And we'll just fill out the rest of this diagram here. So 
So, so far we've gotten the major shapes, the color of those shapes, and we've also gotten the ability to uh, put text into there. Now, if we've got text in there that needs to be formatted a little bit, we can change the color of that font. We can make the font bold if we want to. We can change the font size if we want to. So I'm going to now change the diamond here, double click on the text, go up, find the bold button, change the text, double click on the box, highlight the text, change the font size of the text, bold the text, do those sorts of things. And I can just repeat again. Okay, now if there's a flow chart, I need to show that I'm going from one step to another. So I'm going to go ahead and draw some arrows in here. There's these connectors. We can drag those connectors in. Notice that you've got one end that has an arrow on it, so I'll attach the arrow by hovering over the shape. Notice that when you hover over the shape, it gives a green box here, and it just goes ahead and connects those two together. Now, it's maybe a little bit thin as far as the arrow goes, so I go ahead and click on that, and up at the top of the screen, I can change the width of that line, give it a bit more weight, and then I can repeat those same steps. I can drag in a connector, I can attach one end of the connector to one of the shapes, and the other end of the connector to the other shape. And every time the green box shows up on one of the shapes, it's appropriately snapped to it. Now notice that I've got a little bit of curve to this line here. So if I click on that line, you'll see up at the top, I can decide to change the curve to that line and take the curve out altogether. And I can also thicken that up a little bit. And so you can see here, it's sharp edges and it's thicker now. And I go ahead and attach the last line to these shapes and once again after attaching them we can simply click on the straightener and click on the width of that line and now we've got ourselves something to work with. Okay so you've created the perfect diagram you go to the top left corner of the screen click the save button in the top left hand corner of the screen it looks just like every other option notice the formats here if you're going to save this for PowerPoint save it out as a JPEG or a ping image because these are normal picture files so I'm going to choose JPEG here and then just give it a name, we'll call it flowchart or something like that. And click save. And what it'll ask for is where do you want to save this file? I'll just save it to my desktop. Perfect. Now if I go look at the desktop, you'll see that I have my flowchart right there on the desktop. Very easy. Um, and all I have to do is go into PowerPoint now and choose to insert flowchart1.jpg, that picture that I just created, into the PowerPoint presentation. So I'll open up PowerPoint, click on the Polaroid icon in the middle of my PowerPoint slide, find the flowchart picture I just added, and then just go ahead and insert it. All I have to do is sort of stretch that out a bit, and I've got a picture of a diagram just as if I had created it in some other piece of software I actually had to spend money on. And that's really what I'm getting at here is you can find a free piece of software for almost anything that you can imagine. Here we got diagrams. You see here earlier I created a flow chart, excuse me, a, an org chart, and I used those pictures of people and I labeled the people and you know put in the arrows and things and I just copied that directly into my PowerPoint presentation. It's a very simple tool to use and all you've got to do is at the end of the process save the file out. Now if you noticed, I told you guys to save it as a ping or a JPEG image. In a future uh, installation of this video, I'll tell you all about pings and JPEGs and why they're important. All you need to know right now is a ping image, a PNG, or a JPEG, JPG, are both picture files and they're perfect for inserting into uh, PowerPoint. Now if you were saving this so that you wanted to reopen it in Diagramly later, you could save it out as an XML file and then go into Diagramly and open that XML file and it would remember all of the different parts of your diagram. Very, very cool new feature. That's it. So Alternative Fridays, they're a little bit, uh, you know, quick, simple, easy to use. 
Uh, the important part here is that you recognize that you should be going out in search of these different tools. I'm going to show you one every Friday for, I don't know, for a long time here. Uh, next week's is going to be Open Office's version of Excel, which is totally free for you to install anytime you want. Um, here we went to Diagramly, and it's just a web application you can open up from anywhere in any browser you want. That's it. Episode number four is in the books. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great pleasure to celebrate week number one, the war on bullet points with you. I hope that you guys have picked up some skills that help you to make your next PowerPoint presentation infinitely better. Please, again, take what you learned in these four videos, go to work, try to apply it, and then come back, go to the comments section down at the bottom, or go to Twitter and uh, hit at Neil Malik for me, and just let me know how the skills worked for you, whether your boss was uh, complimentary of your attempt or if uh, there was a little bit of pushback. I'm very happy to get a little conversation going on that. Thank you for watching everyone and remember I want you to be stupendously good at what you do.